Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Instacar HK. Today we got a very exciting episode for you all because for the first time ever we're going on a cross-border out-of-jurisdiction drive in my new Volvo 850 T5R. Now most of you may know I'm a, a huge fan of Harry Mecca from Harry's Garage and he always does these amazing road trips. Now, unfortunately when I started this channel we were right in the middle of the pandemic so we never had the chance to do a out of jurisdiction drive until today where with the Classic Car Club of Hong Kong we're doing a drive to China around the Greater Bay Area. So we will start in Hong Kong. We're now in the uh, Gold Coast Hotel public car park uh, where we are all meeting up. And then shortly we will go to Shenzhen port to cross the border and head to Shenda uh, Sunbuck for the first day. And then we'll go down to uh, Shaoxing, Xiuheng, then down to Qingyuan, Qingyun, then Guangzhou and back. So it's a relatively you know, close drive where we're just around the Greater Bay Area. It'll be five days, uh, it's Saturday today. We're going to be back on Wednesday. Uh, so yeah, we, we got about 17 cars, I think. Um, not all classics, you know, members are f uh, welcome to drive modern cars. So we have a Tesla Model 3, for example. But we have some classics, you know, we have a Panther, we have a, a Mercedes 126, we have a Ferrari Mondial, um, Range Rover first series. So a bunch of cars, which I'll take you guys through later. But now we're just grouping, getting all the labels and paperwork done, and then we'll head to Shenzhen Port, and then I'll catch you there. So we just passed the Chinese border and we're now officially in Shenzhen. Uh, it took about an hour because uh, first of all, apparently we were the first car club to come across with the temporary license uh, since borders opened. So they needed some time to understand what's going on as an immigration needed some time, Chinese immigration needed some time to understand what's going on, get the paperwork. After we passed that, customs had to do a quick check on our cars again to make sure you know we're in the cars we said we're in, checking the chassis number and whatnot. Um, so yeah, we took about a little over an hour, which is actually quick. Apparently, um, normally it could be slower. We're just you know going to lunch now, going through the Shenzhen traffic, which is okay. Uh, it's my first time ever driving in China and immediately they, they're more civilized now but you still have to learn, you know, you, you have to be a bit more aggressive and whatnot so it's been okay. So we're just uh, lining up to, to go into the car park now and after lunch we will drive directly to Shenzhen. And yeah, I'll catch you guys there. So we are at our second day of the trip uh, and now we're at our first rest stop. This morning uh, we went to a very interesting museum uh, as part of the media group 
uh, headquarters in Shenzhen, a very beautiful museum it was designed by a famous Japanese artist apparently and that was quite interesting so after that we're heading to our next destination um, about a hundred kilometers away but on the way here I was being a bit naughty trying trying to chase down a Mercedes S63 and the bullet Mustang uh, and I was really stepping on the carpet and after we got to the um, petrol station here, I saw the um, coolant light was on. The coolant light was on and I was very worried um, because, you know, the last thing you want is a broken radiator or a hose or something. After checking out with the others here, getting help from the others, they found that the coolant was leaving from the cap of this bottle. Uh, and that's probably where the coolant went you know, when I was driving it hard and it was too hot. So we just added some water and um, the light is off. You know, there's still a healthy amount of coolant in the bottle now. So let's hope that was just a one-off um, and we'll keep going uh, through our so journey. We're just stopping here right now, waiting for some of the cars to go through the toll. So I thought I would take this opportunity to do a quick walk around. So the, the right Chongqi. Chinese SUV here is our tour guide car. He leads the way most of the time. But I think by the second day, a lot of us already overtook him. Now this, this is a, quite a special one. It's a Ford Mustang, the new one, but the Bullet Edition, which is uh, to, to celebrate the uh, Bullet movie by Steve McQueen back from many years ago uh, with the amazing uh, car chase scene and of course the star car of which was a Ford Mustang. Now this is a special edition, there's only two in Hong Kong. Uh, it's obviously the exterior is different with a different body kit, wheels that have better brakes, suspension, the engine is tweaked to 490 horsepower with different exhaust and intake system um, and they only made 3,000 of this and only 150 is right-hand drive, as you can see. So it's in the same color as the one in the movie back then. Uh, and the coolest thing is this uh, owner also got a matching personalized plate, bullet. And of course, it's my Volvo 850 T5R. Now, the, as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, members are welcome to bring more than cars. So you see there's a Jag there. There's this Street Fighter Lexus LS 400, very nice. And it's in period rival, the W126, this being a 560 SEC and very, very good nick. I heard the car was originally from Japan. It was a very good nick. Now this is the only other Volvo of, uh, in the group. And the modern is a V90 cross country. Now, according to the owner, he was the only one in Hong Kong to order this car. So this is also a, apparently a one of one Volvo in Hong Kong. Very cool, it's quite fast and looks very comfortable. Now, of course, there's this uh, Model 3 Tesla. It has to look for uh, space to charge every night. And there are some more modern cars here, Countryman, Audi, and this is the super comfortable and super fast S63, which we were gunning around together just now before my, my car decided to lose coolant. All right, so there are more cars, but we're waiting for them uh, to come through the toll. So uh, when I get the opportunity, I'll review some more of the other cars. So we have just arrived at this beautiful fish farm for lunch as you do when you visit China. I thought I can finish uh, introducing the other cars to you guys first. We have this R107 300 SL in very nice original condition. Good car, good classic car to bring on drives like these I think. And then moving over there, there's a first generation Range Rover uh, manual. Um, which is very cool and very popular here. The, the um, mainland Chinese really like the Range Rover. They call it the Lufu, you know, tiger of the road. That's the nickname for the Range Rover. Very nice. And then this is the Panther um, with the Jaguar engine and wheels. Sounds very nice. Um, the weather has been kind, so this um, so far. So the owner was able to take, uh, you know, open his top to drive, otherwise I can imagine it would be quite hot and uncomfortable. And then there's a Defender. Uh, oh, there's the Clubman Mini. 
which is quite cute, small and cute, nippy little car. And over there, we have the Ferrari Mondial, uh, which you guys would recognize from my other videos. It's actually done the Classique from Blackbird, probably the only Mondial QV to have ever done a proper Ferrari Classique restoration in the whole world. Very cool. We are on our way to Shaoxing, I think, and after the uh, fish farm lunch, uh, which frankly wasn't very good. It's, it's a local delicacy, but river fishes are, are never, you know, good or tasty to us. But anyway, after that, um, we were taken to a uh, car ferry as part of our journey to uh, go from uh, across the river in there to back here. And that was quite interesting. It's, it's very basic ferry. I mean, the, the, the ferry itself doesn't even uh, move itself it needs a, a boat on the side to push it um, but it was quite interesting it was fun uh, the ramps going up and down were a bit dodgy uh, but luckily we don't have any you know cars that are really low but uh, you can imagine if you drive a you know testarossa or lamborghini or something they would really suffer um, especially on the way going down um, but you know it is fun it's quite cute a very short journey 10 minutes um, and now we are going to uh, keep going to Shaoxing to our next stop. So we have some downtime now and I wanted to take this opportunity to talk a bit about my new purchase, the Volvo 850 T5R. Now, Volvo had always, as you know, been not a fast brand back then. Uh, it's, it's known for safety. They made big, sometimes ugly cars. So before the 850, it was the 760, I think, which was a huge tank safe, reliable car. Uh, but in the 90s, Volvo decided to develop a new model, which is the 850. And apparently at the time, it was the most expensive project that they have ever done. Um, with the new car having a bit of a new shape and it stuck to their safety features. Is, um, this car was the first to have the what they call the side impact protection, which are basically side airbags. So that all came from the 850 model. Now, but this time, however, what Volvo did differently was they, that they started to look at the performance side of things. So immediately with the 850, uh, they joined, as everyone knows, they joined the British Touring Car Championship initially with the uh, station wagon. They had, did, had some success, but mainly not at the championship, but with the PR success because they were the first and I think only to date. A company manufacturer to use a station wagon and a state car to do the BTCC. So they got a lot of attention on that. Um, and with the road going versions, they initially started with the GLEs, the GLTs, which was just economic cars. But then they also came up with the T5, which was the turbo engine, an inline five turbocharged engine. Um, and, and that was pretty fast for its days. It's about 230 horsepower. And then in 1995, to celebrate all its success in racing and on the road, Volvo came out with the special edition model, the T5R, which is based on the T5 model I talked about, i.e. with the uh, uh, inline-five turbo engine. But this, you know, as with all special edition cars, the exterior uh, has a bit of modifications, uh, bigger Titan wheels, which these are not. These are actually the later R wheels, which are the previous owner change, which I love actually. Uh, a more aggressive body kit, the front limb. Um, and most importantly, the engine has been tweaked uh, to have about 10 horsepower more at 240 horsepower. Uh, and they did that by adding the turbo boost, another 0.1 PSI, and tweaking the engine management, which was actually done by Porsche. So this car was a collaboration between Volvo and Porsche to make this special edition model. Uh, the interior was also uh, uh, done by Porsche. So it was quite a special car being a special edition. So despite Volvo making around a million of the 850s in all variants, this T5R model is actually quite rare uh, because they only produced it for one year in 1995. And the total production with sedan and estate uh, versions was 6,964, so just under 7,000. Of that, 4,564 of them were estate cars, and out of those, only 1,450 
uh, in this uh, launch yellow color, which is actually the most popular color today out of the whole 850 T5R range. So the reason I bought this 850 is it's actually from my era. I actually grew up in an 850 uh, ordinary T5 turbo edition wagon. Uh, my family used to have one. I grew up and I went to school in it. Um, the normal version, frankly, I think it's meh, but I really like the looks of this T5R version with the um, modified front lip. I think that changes the whole car. I actually like how this car looks. And the car is actually not slow as well. I mentioned this 240 horsepower, which was a lot in the 90s, but actually it's still quite fast now. Um, the car is, even by today's standards, in this trip is actually not slow. You'd be surprised, even though it sounds like it's only 20, uh, 240 horsepower. Um, you know, I'll just kick down now. It goes. It really goes. I mean, for you know, 30 something year old car, 240 horsepower, the turbo is still very, very uh, strong. It pulls very strong. So, yeah, it's still a surprise. I mean, people are still surprised, including people on this trip, are still surprised how fast this car is. Um, so, yeah, all in all, this was not an impulse buy. Uh, this was not, you know, I saw something cute on the 28 car and bought it. Like, I actually like this car and I don't have any regrets so far. So, we are on our third day and we just left Qingyuan last night, Qingyun, where we stayed at a very nice onsen hotel by Rosewood. It was actually very decent. Um, so we had a very enjoyable uh, evening and morning. And then today we drove down to Guangzhou and as you guys can see at the back, there are some Lamborghinis behind us because fortunately, one of our members traveling with us is actually the distributor of Lamborghini in Hong Kong and China. And we happened to be having lunch uh, around his showroom. So he kindly let us park our cars uh, uh, outside his showroom and then you know, look at the cars. And to be honest, you know, the Lamborghinis we see a lot in Hong Kong. So I wasn't having much expectations until when we got here, I found this in their showroom. An orange Mura S from California. Now that I did not expect on this trip when they told us we will be stopping by the Guangzhou Lamborghini dealership. Look at that, extremely beautiful. And the pleasant surprise, the car is in very, very good nick. The interior clearly has been very well maintained. So is the exterior. Anyway, so that's a pleasant surprise. Uh, and uh, we're here for one more day. We're leaving Guangzhou tomorrow straight down to uh, Shenzhen Bay to go back home. So unless there's anything special, I, I think this is it. I don't think we're doing many cars or driving stuff. It's mostly sightseeing these two days. So, you know, unless there's something more to show, I think this is the end. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, our first uh, out of jurisdiction road trip. I certainly enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a like, please subscribe. Please remember to click the bell button next to the subscribe button so you'll know when our next video is. Thank you and have a good day.